A war of words between federal ministers and Saskatchewan Premier Scott Moe after Moe decided his government will not remit the home heating portion of the carbon tax to Ottawa. That decision comes after the province said its Crown Corporation would stop collecting the tax from residents. Ottawa is mulling legal action but backtracked on an initial decision to stop sending any of the carbon tax rebate to Saskatchewan. Now only the home heating portion of the rebate will be held back. Let's bring back the front bench to talk about that. Brian Gallant, Lisa Raitt, Tom Mulcair and Rob Benzie. Brian, I'll start with you. Uh, we have talked as a group about the carbon tax and the fight between provinces in the West in particular and the federal government many times, but this certainly does escalate it to a new level. What is your assessment of the political stakes there? Well, I think anytime you have some of the premiers in the West uh, take a pick a fight with the Trudeau government usually is probably good politics. I mean, there's probably some nuance there and some exceptions, but nevertheless, I think many of them calculate it as good politics, and that can certainly be sort of the the uh, context in which we see Premier Mo doing what he's doing. I'm assuming as well this is something he's been talking about for quite some time, so he must be seeing some polling or even just getting anecdotal evidence from his caucus and his team that this is resonating with the people of his province, so it's something that he's really doubling down on. Um, from the side of the federal government, I, I just, I mean, I sympathize with them, though. I mean, this is I think it is pretty unheard of uh, for for someone with elected office to basically say we're not going to follow the law is is pretty aggressive. Uh, is he getting the media that he probably wants for the political fight? Yes, but I certainly and I like I like Premier Scott Moe. I've had the chance to to meet him. He's a nice guy, um, but I would worry for him if I was on his team that he may just seep into a little bit of a process issue, and then all of a sudden this story gets away from him. I, so so I, I think the point has been made. I would like to to think that maybe they're going to be able to resolve this in some shape or form. Uh, I think the, res the, the resolution will have to be that Saskatchewan follows the law and follows the process and then continues to advocate, I'm sure, as to why the people in his province in the West should get whatever it is that he, he would like to see the federal government do. But all that to say, the politics of the of the protest, uh, certainly probably on the Scott Moe would be on the winning side of that, most likely. But I think he's he's seeping in a little bit into having a process issue that he won't be on the right side of anymore. It's interesting, Rob, because my sense is that the federal government also likes, for better for lack of a better word, the politics of this. And that the, the reason I have that sense is outside of the normal course of events when it comes to issues around the, the carbon tax. In this instance, the, the, federal, the provincial government rather applied to the federal government to download responsibility from the, the uh, Crown Corporation to themselves. Essentially, if you're going to prosecute anyone, you can go over the politicians, not the executives who run Sask Energy. They could have blocked that from happening, which may have led to a different decision from Scott Moe, but they didn't. Yeah, I mean, and and look, I've been looking at the polls in Saskatchewan. This is clearly about politics. It's a dead heat between the NDP and the Saskatchewan party. So Premier Mo is looking at the same polls and probably even more detailed ones and saying this is what he needs to do. Um, we had um, Manitoba Premier Wab Kanu at the Toronto Star's editorial board about an hour ago here in Toronto. And he was, uh, we asked him about what he thought about what Premier Mo was doing next door. And Premier Canoe has expressed his concerns about the carbon tax, uh, albeit in a different way. And he said that they look, they had a legal opinion, and they said what the, the, the they their lawyers said we can't do this, so they're not doing it. So clearly, Mr. Uh, Premier Mo is getting different legal advice than Premier Canoe. We don't see any other premiers doing this. And Vashi, we've had secessionist premiers in Quebec who wanted to leave Canada, want to take their province out of the country, and they didn't break federal law the way that. Premier Mo is doing. So that is a, it's a dangerous precedent, I think. Tom, uh, Rob brings up, though, that the, there is an election happening in Saskatchewan, and I think it's also salient to point out, like, the NDP in that province are not against what the Premier is doing. They're a little bit, you know, they, they take some nuance in their, in their criticism of what the federal government is doing, sort of of the, of the Premier, I should say. They, they're kind of accusing him of not better advocating for their position, but they have not come out and said, We're, what you're doing is illegal, you shouldn't do it. They actually think that what the federal government doing, is doing is unfair, which I think tells you a bit to Brian's earlier point about where the electorate in Saskatchewan is at. Uh, exactly. And since Rob just raised Quebec, I mean, as a Quebecer, I'm not entirely shocked and appalled to see a candidate in an impending provincial general election use Ottawa as a whipping boy. I think it's something we've seen once or twice in the province of Quebec. But going to this case with regard to Scott Moe, talking about legal opinions and the like, look, there's no legal opinion required here. The federal government took this case to the Supreme Court and won. They were allowed to impose this tax. Now, if they want, really want to play hardball back, and I, 
would be interesting to watch because there are checks for about 1800 bucks for the average Saskatchewan family that are in play here. And so if they turn the tables and say, well, until this thing gets settled, sorry, you know, Scott Moe is stopping you from getting your check, maybe people will think twice about it. And I really appreciate the fact that you raised this question with regard to the NDP's behavior on this. Are they simply looking at the polling numbers and saying, well, we better not get on the wrong side of Scott Moe on this? Or should they take a full-throated, principled stand and say, hey, this is about Canada doing its fair share? for future generations to, to fight the fight against climate change, to lower our greenhouse gas emissions and putting a price on carbon is part of that. I would have really expected to see some of that language come out of the NDP in Saskatchewan, but as you correctly say, they, they just feel that they've been put in a corner on this and then they can't fight back. But, you know, people who are put in a corner and don't fight back uh, don't often get the respect that they should otherwise get from, from the electorate. So we'll see if that actually works out in favor of the NDP. I have my doubts. I would also add, though, Lisa, it's not just the NDP in Saskatchewan. It's Premier Canoe, who won't go anywhere near as far as uh, Premier Mo, but who has vocally called into question the effectiveness and the utility of the consumer carbon tax. And it's also everyone running to replace Rachel Notley in Alberta. Like, nobody is going out on the limb that, that Tom describes that they might have a few years ago. Well, you reap what you sow. That's what I would say to the federal government. I mean, they were the ones that broke on home heating oil. They're the ones that gave the break to Atlantic Canadians by phasing it in later than they were supposed to. And once you open up that line, man, you've got everyone else coming in behind saying, well, why not me? And that's exactly what Scott Moe is saying in Saskatchewan. I'm really disappointed because I don't like the use of the term immoral. I don't like the way they're personalizing it with Premier Mo. This is just pitting one Canadian against another. There are some real principled reasons why Scott Moe is doing what he's doing, but we all want to say it's because of political gain. Maybe he's doing it because he just feels that Saskatchewan's getting a raw deal and Nova Scotia, Newfoundland, and anybody else who is getting an exemption on home heating oil. I know that Saskatchewan has some as well, but we know where this came from. It came from a specific issue with respect to Newfoundland. And talk to any Newfoundland MP who's going to tell you exactly they are the ones who were successful in getting the federal government to not charge carbon tax there. So how can you not expect Scott Moe to react to his citizens? It may be, as an aside, a helpful in politics, great. But I think it's coming from a principal place. And I think he's going to do just fine. I just got 30 seconds left, Brian, but I wondered your perspective on the Liberals, which appear to me, ever since that carbon rebate rebrand, to really dig in on that messaging. And they seem to think that it's working for them. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the last elections, they certainly have tried to use climate change as one of the wedge issues between the Conservatives and more specifically to try to show Canadians that, in their humble opinion, maybe the Conservatives under their previous leaders and the current leader might be too right wing for their liking. So they could be setting that up for the next election as well and doubling down and trying to improve their message so that will resonate a bit more with Canadians. Well, I feel like we'll be talking about this until that election and thereafter. I'll leave it there. Thank you so much to our front bench, Lisa Raitt, Brian Gallant, Tom Mulcair, and Rob Benzie. We'll have